Hi soil sleuthers! Do you like to climb trees or jump over creeks? You need a strong body to do this. Your body needs good nutrition to be healthy and strong. Well guess what? So do plants. Plants get their nutrients primarily from the soil. And this is a table of the essential elements that plants need to grow big, to bear tasty fruit, to have beautiful flowers, or even fuzzy leaves. Now these first three, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, are called macronutrients because they're needed by the plant in a relatively large amount. Next, down here we have hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. They're called non-mineral nutrients because they're obtained from the atmosphere and water. Together, these six elements have important roles to play as building blocks for plant cells, creating biomolecules like proteins, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates. Three additional elements, calcium, sulfur, and magnesium, are called secondary nutrients because they have important supporting roles in plant cellular development. Now the rest of these essential elements are called micronutrients because they're needed in just small amounts. It's important to note that despite their name, micronutrients are just as essential to plants as our macronutrients. So let's move on into the different macronutrients and what they do. Nitrogen is responsible for rapid foliage growth and that dark green color. However, nitrogen can easily leave the soil so there isn't enough for the plant to take up and use. It is mobile in the plant and it can move to new growth. Now look over here at this beautiful orange colored rose. Look at those leaves and how dark and green and glossy they are. That's thanks to nitrogen. Now let's look at this other picture and you see how these rose leaves are yellow. We call that chlorosis and it is a sign that the plant doesn't have enough nitrogen. It is a nitrogen deficiency. Let's move on to phosphorus. Phosphorus is important for encouraging root formation and growth. It increases the quality of seed, fruit, and flower production. It can increase disease resistance. Now let's look over here at this tasty tomato plant. Do you see those dark green leaves? Looking good, looking pretty normal. But what about this tomato leaf over here? That purpley color is a sign that the tomato plant is not getting enough phosphorus. And for all you soil sleuthers out there, this is really important. If you're out in your garden and you see that your plants don't look quite what you think they should, I wonder if it might be a plant nutrient deficiency. Let's move on to our next macronutrient, potassium. Potassium helps plants overcome drought stress. When there's not enough rain and plants don't have enough water, it helps them manage that. It can improve winter hardiness or tolerance to cold. It can increase disease resistance and it improves the strength of stems. Now let's look at this soybean plant here on the left. You see nice green leaves, just like a soybean should look like. And then you look at this picture on the right and you see that chlorosis or that yellowing of the leaf, but then you also see necrosis or the leaf tissue that's dying on the margins of the leaf. Those are symptoms that the soybean is not getting enough potassium. Okay, let's move on to these non-mineral nutrients. We all know that plants get carbon dioxide from the air. Everybody take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Your breath out is carbon dioxide and the plant uses that carbon dioxide with water that's in the plant and powered by sunlight photosynthesis will happen and the plant uses that carbon, that oxygen, and that hydrogen to form starches and sugars. And these carbohydrates are used as energy within the plant. Also, when a plant dies, carbon dioxide is given off from the decomposition of the plant and oxygen is additionally important in the process of respiration. Now, plant cells are always respiring, always using energy. Let's move on to our secondary nutrients. We've got magnesium, which is a key part of chlorophyll, which remember is that plant pigment that helps absorb sunlight during photosynthesis. 
Sulfur is also important in the formation of chlorophyll and it can help with protein production and making plant oils. It can also increase crop yields and improve produce quality. Then we have calcium. Calcium is needed in really large amounts by all plants because it is in the formation of cell walls and cell membranes. Outside of the plant, calcium plays a really vital role in soil structure. We're going to move on to micronutrients. These eight micronutrients are really critical even though they're needed in just a small amount by the plant. Boron is used with calcium in cell wall synthesis. It's essential for creating new plant cells. Boron also helps with pollination and fruit and seed development. Chlorine helps in plant growth and development by regulating stomates. Stomates opening and closing in the leaves and that's where gas exchange occurs, where carbon dioxide comes in and oxygen goes out. Manganese is important in plant processes also including photosynthesis, respiration, nitrogen assimilation. Manganese is also involved in pollen germination, pollen tube growth, root cell elongation, and resistance to root pathogens. We have iron, which is an essential micronutrient for almost all living things. In plants, it plays a critical role in DNA synthesis, respiration, photosynthesis. It also helps in the synthesis of chlorophyll and essential for the maintenance of chloroplast structure and function. Nickel is a part of some plant enzymes, helps nitrogen change into a form that is usable by the plant. Copper activates some enzymes in plants which are involved in plant fiber production or lignin production. It's also needed in the processes of photosynthesis and respiration. Zinc is an important part of many enzymes and proteins. It plays an important role in a wide range of systems such as growth hormone production and internode elongation. And molybdenum is an essential component in more enzymes that convert nitrogen into a usable form in the plant. So if you look at this pea plant here, you see these little nodules in the roots. Those nodules are made by symbiotic nitrogen-fixing bacteria called rhizobium. Together with molybdenum, they can take nitrogen from the atmosphere so that it is usable by the plant. So cool. All right, now what I want you to do, that was a lot of information about a lot of different plant nutrients. What I want you to remember is there's a number of different plant nutrients that are important to drive the growth and development of plants. You want a tasty ripe blackberry? Well, you're going to need these nutrients in your plants to make it happen. So now go play this plant nutrient matching game where you try to remember which of those elements were macronutrients, which of them were micronutrients, which were secondary nutrients, and how about those last non-mineral essential nutrients. All right, let us know how it goes.